Welcome to today's video. In the previous video we explored two common methods of making and feeding silage which include, surface silage and plastic tube silage. In this episode we shall be looking at maize for silage. Maize is grown all over the world and it is famous for its high energy and starch levels. As mentioned earlier, maize as a fodder is best preserved in form of silage. Different parts of the maize plant are helpful to the cow whether fed as fresh cut or silage. The grain or kernel is the storehouse for most of the nutrients, especially starch. For silage making, the full crop which includes the grain, stem and leaves is used. The corn or cob contains up to 70% of the key nutrients from the maize while the stem and the leaves contribute the remaining 30%. Maize seeds need a seedbed that is soft, well aerated, moist and without weeds. The soil should be loamy and fertile with a pH of between neutral to slightly acidic. The soil should be soft, up to at least 20 to 25 centimeters deep. For good water management, the planting field should be uniformly graded and leveled. When planting, proper preparation, adequate fertilization, correct planting depth and seed spacing are very important for the success of the crop. When maize is established purposefully for silage, the distance between the rows is 75 cm and 25 cm between the seed holes. Where maize is meant for human consumption, this spacing can be wider. For example, 90 cm by 30 cm. Spacing for silage production can be reduced further to 60 cm by 25 cm or even 40 cm by 25 cm depending on the fertility of the soil. A good crop of maize requires about 460 to 600 mm of water during its life growing season. Do not let maize plants wilt due to water shortage at any stage of their life cycle. Do not allow water to remain stagnant in a maize field at any stage of its growth. Both scarcity or excess in water supply affects the maize yield and quality negatively. Weeds, diseases and insects can ham maize during its life cycle. This will lead to production and quality losses. It is strongly recommended that the farmer get specialized advice on herbicides and pesticides to prevent the losses associated with pests and diseases. Chemicals used to prevent pests and diseases should be applied in the right time, right amounts, and the person applying them should dress in protective clothing. When harvesting maize, the height of cut is usually done with a row harvester for large fields but can also be done manually if the fields are small in acreage. The recommended height of cutting should be about 30 cm in height from the ground especially where the maize variety is not specifically bred for fodder. If cut less than 30 cm high, there is a higher possibility that soil will get into the silage and also that the digestibility of the silage will be reduced due to the increased amount of lignin from the woody stem. The best chopping length for forage is 0.8 cm. This length is suitable for making silage and allows for sufficient pressing or compaction of the silage in the bunker. When it is chopped shorter, the crop loses effective fiber and comes closer to being a concentrate. When the maize is chopped more coarsely than 0.8 cm, it becomes more difficult to compact in the silage bunker and harder to mix in the total mixed ration. Incomplete compaction may cause the silage to heat up and mold may develop. 
Uncrushed kernels or grains are almost indigestible and they mostly end up in the dung and may cause injuries to the rectum. For best results in maize silage, kernels should be crushed completely. For conservation, the maize is ensiled after chopping and then covered with plastic and a canvas sheet for protection against birds, cats, rodents, etc. Preferably, this takes place in the silage bunker. It makes it possible to press the material properly in readiness for fermentation into silage. If no bunker is available, putting the silage in tubes is also a good alternative depending on the amount of silage being made. When making silage, the size of the bunker is important. With a large herd, a large bunker would be required but with a small herd the bunker size is reduced accordingly. If using a bunker, the recommended feeding speed is 1.5 to 2 meters per week. When the feeding speed is less than this, then it means that the silage bunker is bigger than the size of the herd. Low feeding speeds promote heating and molding which makes the silage less nutritious and more exposed to spoilage through decomposition. If your ration requires that you feed 5 kg of maize silage in dry matter weight, then 30 cows will feed 150 kg of dry matter which translates to 1050 kg of dry matter per week. Each cubic meter of the silage contains 180 kg of dry matter. For a weekly amount of 1050 kg dry matter, 1050 divided by 180 kg dry matter equals 6. This means that approximately 6 meters cubed of bunker space or volume will be needed per week. With a desired feeding speed of 2 meters per week, it means that a 1 meter length of the bunker should contain 3 cubic meters of silage. This will ensure that feeding will be faster than heating, and there will be less or no wastage of silage on account of heating. make sure you achieve a good compaction. Silage that is not pressed well contains too much air in it and is likely to heat up and lose nutritional value or become palatable. Heating up and molding mostly occurs on the sides where the downward pressure is less. It affects the palatability of the silage. If the feed is moldy, the cow will not like it and therefore the dry matter intake will be reduced. This then reduces milk production. When a cow feeds on moldy feed, the mold has a negative effect on the growth of good bacteria in the rumen. This interferes with the functioning of the rumen and the cow absorbs less feed. When less feed is absorbed, cows produce less milk and are likely to develop health problems. Cows pay back good quality silage with high milk production and a long productive life. For instance, annual calving therefore more lactations and less health problems. A healthy cow costs less to maintain and yields profit to the owner. Good quality silage should have the following characteristics. Dry matter between 30 to 35%. Kernels or grains at the dough stage or past the milk stage. A chop length of between 0.8 to 1 cm. All grains crushed, not whole. Clean look and non-foul smell. Yellow to golden color. Free-flowing and not sticky. Fresh maize has excellent nutritional value and high palatability. Since it has a high sugar content, care must be taken when feeding large amounts to avoid negative health effects like rumen acidosis. Maize silage should always be fed when the is still cold. Warm silage is an indication that silage is spoiling. A good compaction and a heavy covering ensures that the silage remains cold. Because of high levels of energy present in maize, feeding maize can lead to over-conditioning or fattening of cows. 
Overconditioned or fat cows have lots of problems with feed intake, especially after calving. They may also have ketosis, a rumen disease. Because maize is low on crude protein, being an energy fodder, it needs to be supported with other protein sources of feed and fodder. Maize also has a low mineral content, therefore, a corn ration should be supplemented with minerals. When corn is fed as a concentrate, the kernel is ground and it is fed as a meal or in combination with another single ingredient concentrate. Maize is then added to provide additional energy or starch to the feed ration. Here is a summary of the most important points. Tips for harvesting maize. Harvest during the hard dough ripe stage. This gives a dry matter content of 30 to 35 percent. Do not cut too short. A stubble height of 30 centimeters is recommended. Chop with sharp knives. The ideal length is 0.8 centimeters. Pay attention to the kernels. All kernels should be crushed. And finally, adapt the size of the bunker to the size of the herd. Press the maize silage well. Seal the maize silage with plastic and if possible a canvas cover. Cover the bunker with a layer of soil on top of the plastic or with other materials. The maize silage should remain cold and without mold. Pay attention to the edges of the bunker. They heat up first and then mold develops. Feed approximately 2 meters per week. Always slice the silage straight off the bunker when feeding. Do not leave loose maize silage lying around. It will begin to heat up and decay. Feed the maize silage cold and fresh. Avoid packing silage into gunny bags for hours before feeding. Silage can heat up in the bags and lose nutritional value. Minimize the time taken between fetching from the bunker and feeding to curb heating. As we conclude, here are a few things to keep in mind. Avoid ensiling silage when it is too young, at that stage, it has low starch levels. The sugar is lost in fermentation and more nutrients are lost in effluence due to high moisture levels. When making silage, aim to fill up the bunker in a maximum of two days and preferably one day. Ensure the silage is well covered and weight is placed on top of the bunker to maintain the compaction throughout the duration of the silage in the bunker. Finally, maize harvested past the right stage has less moisture than what is required and low sugar levels. This makes it hard to compact and is likely to heat up and spoil. Thanks for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative content. Until next time, happy farming.